Amen. I got a testimony. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say good white, good, good, good morning to my wife. Amen. 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 Scripture has already been read, but I just want to focus on this one verse coming out of Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 reads, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. You can take your seats now. Anybody ever been tempted? Has anyone ever been tested? I pray that you know the difference. Amen. In reading this and studying this, I realized that this is probably one of the greatest plays in the Bible. It has three people in it. So it's what is known as a short play. It has the Son of God. It has Satan, and it has the Father. Takes you to two different locations. One is in the wilderness. The other one is at the temple of Jerusalem. But as we always study God's word, there's always a hero. And God is always the hero. No matter how bad it looks, no matter how tough it may get, God is always going to be the hero. Walk with me just for a little while. Hmm. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. I'll explain this later, but I need you to walk with me right now. If you see that first word, it says then. Amen. Then connects us to something because something had to happen for them to say then. Amen. Then takes us from the past all the way into the present. Walk with me if you will. You must understand that this is none other than Jesus post baptism. We assume, we believe, some have put it on paper that baptism ends from the time that you come up out of the water. But the truth is, we really don't understand the full completion of a baptism. Come on and walk with me just for a little while. Because here Jesus is, he has been baptized by water, he is being baptized by the Spirit of God, and his ordination service is taking place in the wilderness right there, and the only one that's in attendance right now is Satan himself. Walk with me if you will. Now you ask, well, what is the hurry? Why does all these things have to go together at once? You must understand that Jesus has been out there for 40 days and 40 nights. He has 
fasting. He is tired. He is hungry. He is weak. Walk with me if you will. But he also understands that, look, from the time that I came up out of that water, you must understand, I only have 42 months to do the work that God's given me to do. Uh, if you break it down in the years, that is three years and six months. Walk with me just for a little while. He doesn't have time to schedule a service. He doesn't have time to get a guest speaker. He doesn't have time to put a program together. He doesn't have time to put together a flyer to post it on Zoom and Facebook and all that stuff. He said, I've got work to do and I've got to get to it as soon as I can get to it. Jesus on the move now and I want you to understand that's what he is doing right now. Another thing that you must understand and walk with me if you will. People ask, well, what is the hurry? What is, why is it so important? You got to understand if God call you, he's got to touch you to make sure that you're worthy of the calling. Come on and walk with me if you will. Now what you must understand is that Jesus did not come into this confrontation of his own free will. I want you to understand Jesus came because it was, it, it was deemed by God. It was an experience that God wanted him to experience. It was a plan that God wanted him to go through because the truth is we're all going to have to go through temptation. We all going to be tempted at some time or another. It doesn't matter where you at, what you're doing or who you're with. You're going to be tempted at some time if you are a child of God. Walk with me just for a little while. But now what you must understand, notice this because I've got to run. I can't keep this all day. I could stay here and tell you the whole story but then we will be here at about 3 o'clock. But I'm going to give you this version if you just stay with me a little while. Notice this Notice what Jesus does and what he does not do. And I love this thing. Notice what Jesus does. He does not call down divine judgment on Satan. Walk with me if you will. He does not walk with me if you will. He does not argue with Satan because he understands it would do no good. He simply says, I'm going to rely on the scripture. I don't need no evangelist to lay hands on me. I don't need no prophet to speak over me. The scripture has already been written. The book is already there. All we got to do is live by the word of God. Walk with me. He said it is written in all three temptations. Now, 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 now. He has dealt with this dealing with Satan and he is not running from Satan but he is not standing. He is staying there because he understands that I've got some things to do but I want Satan to know that he's, gonna not, he's not going to sway me from what I have to do because the truth is if you were to put a title to the sermon it simply says stick with the plan of God. It's God's plan. You don't need to shortcut it. You don't need to change it. You don't need to rearrange it. Just stick with the plan that God has given you. Walk with me if you will. But I want you to understand something. I've never been to a baptism. I've known, never known of a baptism. And I've never been in the presence of one that's having a baptism. That Satan did not get arrested or did not get angry about the baptism itself. But what you got to understand, and this is what I love about Satan. Satan is real picky if you don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. He is real picky. You know why? Because Satan only, he only bothers with, he does not bother with three types of people. Do you know who those people are? Those are the dead. Those are the lost and most of all those are the lukewarm Christians. He already know you ain't going to do nothing for him. He already know you ain't going to lift up nothing for him. You already know you're not going to go out and represent him. He already knows what you are capable of doing already. If Satan don't bother you, then you don't mean nothing to God. That's what he wants you to understand. If you ain't doing nothing for God, why should I even worry and bother about you? I've got, better, I've got bigger fish to fry. People that are out there praising God, people that are out there worshiping God, people that are out there walking and working for God. I've got to get them, but I don't need to worry about you because I know that you are a fish rider. I know that you're only going to do something if it's to please you. I already know that you ain't going to do nothing if it's going to cost you something. I already know that. I'll get to you later. But right now, I've got to get to those that are committed to God. I've got to get to those that are focused on God. I've got to get to those that believe that are for God I live and for God I die. Yeah. But you got to understand, despite how good it sounded, notice what our Lord and Savior does. Despite how good it sounded, despite what Satan was offering, despite that it might be profitable for God, he does not move from God's plan. You can give me all the shortcuts you want to, but if I stay with God's plan, I know I'm going to be all right. If I stay with God's plan, nothing's going to move me from the blessings that's coming my way. If I stay with God's plan, I'm going to be all right come hell or high water. But you got to understand something. Now, the reason I ask you that question, because in seminary, I'm getting ready to walk you through the seminary that I had to go through. The reason I ask you that question is because 
had to study the scripture. We had to break it down and we had to write a paper on it. Walk with me if you will. It was called facing temptation. Now, now you have to understand the difference between temptation and, and testing. Walk with me if you will. Temptation is, walk with me if you will. Temptation is people that are hoping that you do wrong. Testing is people that are praying that you do right. Temptation are people that hope that you fail, but it is testing that people hope that you succeed. Because the truth is, temptation is not a sin. It does not become a sin until you act on it, until you believe it, and until you start to walk in it, until you put your hands to it. Anybody ever been tempted? Walk with me if you will. Now you've got to understand, because the minute that you believe it, the minute that you accept it, the minute that you put your hand to it, you have already sinned. Now, I've got some questions here, actually, and I'm going to run, and we're going to get on out of here. How about that? Is that all right? The first question I have to ask you is, who is immune to temptation? The truth is, one person put down that it is the pastor. That's a lie, and the truth ain't in them. I want you to know that right up front, that it's a lie. So some say that it was the deacons, but I want you to understand something. They don't know the deacons that I know. Walk with me, if you will. But now, 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 you got to understand that no one is even temptation. No to temptation. The next question that was on the test, you got to understand is, walk with me if you will. Um, I want you to understand, what was the next question? The next question you got to understand, walk with me if you will, because it took, I took this test a long time ago. The next question that was on this test right now is you have to understand when was Jesus tempted? Now, some put down that he was tempted before he went into the water. Others put down that he was tempted when he came up out of the water. But the truth is, if you will read the scripture, if you will understand, Jesus was tested when he was tempted, when he was in the desert, when he was weak, when he was hungry, when he was tired, when he was weary. Walk with me if you will. It is alone that the devil tried to get you. It is alone that the devil will take you out. It is alone when nobody around to encourage you, to comfort you. That's when the devil comes at you most of all. Because if you ain't got nobody on your side in times of trouble, you want somebody. And you'll take the nearest, most desperate person it is. Old Slewfoot can walk up to you smiling with one tooth. And you'll say, that's my friend right there. That's the one I'm going to hold on to. Because you ain't got nobody else. But that's the, that's the tricks of the devil. The devil always want to get you alone. Now you have to understand that the third question that was asked, the third question is, that why was Jesus even tempted? Walk with me if you will. There are two reasons that Jesus was tempted. One was to prove himself to God. Come on and walk with me if you will. The other one was to prove himself to his future followers. What do you mean, John? All you got to do is understand what the scriptures are telling you. Because when he goes to prove himself to God, guess what? He is tempted to prove that he can handle the pressure. He is tempted to prove that walk with me if you will, that he has the power to overcome sin. And he is tempted to approve to prove that he can stand in allegiance to God and for God I live and for God I die. Walk with me if you will. No matter what you bring before me, I gotta stand for God. No matter what for me, I gotta stand for God. No matter what you may show me, I gotta stand for God. For God I live and for God I die. Yes, yes, yes. But now let's about it. The other part is, look at how Jesus has already taken care of us and he haven't even started his ministry yet. He's still in the, he's still in the baptismal phase, but you have to understand that God's got to get him right. God's got to get him right just how he want him because you got to understand when God called you, yeah, he saw your potential, but I want you to understand, he's got to make sure that you're aware of the potential that he's getting ready to put in you anyway. Walk with me if you will. Anybody and everybody shouldn't just be able to come in the house of God and speak a word to you and you run and leave the house of God. Anybody and everybody shouldn't just, shouldn't just show you a Bible and you think that they are a walking soul of God. You got to prove something to me, baby. Because the truth is, notice what Jesus does. I want you to understand, he proves to his future followers that he is going to encourage them in times of temptation. He proves to his future followers, you got to understand this thing, is that look, you can overcome this thing, you can stand in it, you can be, you can be a defense against it, but you got to be committed to it, you got to be faithful to it, you got to show the world that you're in this thing running, because now what he does is, now what he does is, he exposes Satan and his tactics. That's the reason I'm still confused right now today, why people are still falling for scams when God has already shown us the scammer. I'm still telling a few from now how, pe how men can call somebody on a phone and trick them out of a million dollars. I'm still confused how people don't even know people, have never met people, and they will go to the 
a bank, empty their account, and mail a check to an unknown person. I'm just confused how you can be, but that's the scam, that's the scam of this Satan himself. You've got to understand that what he is showing us, what he is showing us when he stands against Satan, he lets us know. He lets us know if he lets us know nothing else. That look, you can overcome sin, you can have the victory over sin, but you gotta be committed to this thing. You gotta walk in this thing. You gotta be faithful. And all Jesus kept saying the whole three temptations, what did he say? It is written. Walk with me if you will. He does not reinvent the Bible. He just uses the Bible. Walk with me if you will. I just want to know, do you have your Bible with you today? Because I want you to understand something. If you're depending on the media screen, when the power goes out, the word goes out. Walk with me if you will. But you've got to have your word. But not only must you have your word in the physical sense, it's got to be in your heart. It's got to be in your mind. It's got to be in your soul. You gonna need this word sometime or another. It is written already. Now the truth is, walk with me. Sunday school messed me up this morning. Deacon Hurst messed me up. Because here she is. God has given me this thing. And Deacon Hurst has the audacity to ask, what can separate you from God? Now, the faithful say nothing. But truth is, temptation can separate you from God. I want you to understand. Walk with me. There are three temptations that are going on here. There are three temptations throughout the world. There are three temptations in the Bible. I'm just teaching. Don't worry about it. There's, no, there's not, not going to be no hoop in the day. Walk with me, if you will. It is the temptation of flesh. It is the temptation of eyes. And it's the pride of life. Walk with me, if you will. If you really want to get deep into this thing, it is physical temptation. It is emotional temptation. And it's control temptation. Walk with me, if you will. But you got to understand, if you ever act on it, you have gone too far already. You have gone too far already. Now notice this. Here Jesus is. Stay with me if you will. He is getting ready to deal with the physical temptation because Satan just won't leave him alone. But I want you to understand, I can't blame Satan because this is God's plan. This is God's will because they have to make sure that everything is going to walk the earth and be an example for him. He got to make sure that he's going to set the example around him. I want you to understand this. Have you ever understood that when mama sends you out, when you come out of the grave's house and you go out in the street and you act a fool, you ain't coming back in that house. You got to represent the house. People should know you from where you came from. If you come out of New Mission Baptist Church and you acting a fool in the street, that's what people are going to see, a new Mission Baptist church. You represent the house and you represent God. Now, when it comes to physical temptation, you must understand something. Physical temptation, well, I want you to understand, is the lust of the flesh. Come on and walk with me, if you will. This is the lust of the flesh. It means that I'm totally independent. I don't need God. I don't need nobody else. I'm going to do my own thing whenever I want to do my thing, and you can't change it anyway. This is the lust of the flesh. Walk with me. But many good marriages have been torn apart because of the lust of the flesh. A lot of good homes have been broken because of the lust of the flesh. The graveyard has increased because of the lust of the flesh. Jails have been built simply for those that have had the lust of the flesh. You got to understand because notice this. Notice what Satan does. He simply tells Jesus. And I love how Satan starts this thing out because he uses the word if. It is a conjunction. It is a possibility. It is an opportunity. It is a maybe. But it is never a sure thing. He said if. You are the son of God. He is trying to put doubt in Jesus' mind already that although people are walking around here calling you God, although people are calling you the son of God, although you have been baptized in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit, I just want to know, are you sure that you are the son of God? Are you sure? Are you sure that you are a child of God? Are you sure that you're walking with God? Are you sure that you are committed to God? Because if there's any doubt in your mind right now, you need to recommit your life to God. 
He simply said, if you are the son of God, take these stones and turn them into bread. But notice what Jesus does. I want you to understand, notice what Jesus does. Jesus does not get upset. Jesus does not get defensive. Jesus has flipped the scripture on and tell me, look, man does not live by bread alone. Come on and walk with me if you will. Because the truth is, what you must understand is, I'll give you something right now. It's scientific. You ready for it? Let me explain something to you. Man can live weeks without bread. He can live days without days without water. But if he is a child of God, he should never go a whole day without the word in him. Walk with me. You should get the word somewhere, sometime throughout that day. He said, if you are the son of God. But Jesus just keeps saying, it is written. It is written. That's the reason it's important that you know your word. I'm not telling you to memorize all 66 books. I'm not telling you to be a walking Bible. But you should know the word. Walk with me if you will. If it's twisted, you should know that it's twisted. If it's misconstrued, you should know that it's misconstrued. If you know it ain't the truth, you should know it's not the truth. If a verb is left out, if a noun is left out, if an adjective is left out, you should know the word. It's time out. It's time out for all these people walking around here quoting the Bible. Do you know that some scriptures have 16 words in it and a person can walk up and tell you two of them and you will run with them. Amen. But it's got to cut like a knife. The thing that I want you to understand about physical temptation when it comes to the word, walking, never disregards word. Never disregard it. The word will keep you faithful. The word will keep you right. The word will keep you focused if nothing else. Now, now that he has not achieved anything with Jesus on that, he moves on to the second temptation. The second temptation is emotional temptation. Now, i got to clear up something before I go any farther. You will find this in the book of Luke also in chapter 4. But the only difference between Luke and Matthew is, is that Luke, walk with me if you will, he puts the temptations in, in theological order. He puts the temptations in theological order. But Matthew puts them in chronological order. What Matthew is telling you that, I was a witness to this. I seen this. I experienced this. I'm not putting it in theological order just to make the scripture sound good, just so you can focus. I'm putting it in chronological order because this is exactly how it went. But before I leave physical temptation, you must understand if you want to find it, you can find it in Deuteronomy 8 and 3. But now we must move on because now emotional temptation. When it comes to emotional temptation, you must understand it's no more than the pride of life. Walk with me if you will. What it means is that I'm questioning God's love now. Mm. Let me tell you something right now. Let me give you the warning right up front. Don't never, don't never question God. Don't never test God. Don't never test God. Don't never test God. I can't say it enough. Don't never test God. Because don't never test where God is going to cover you. Don't never test whether God is going to keep you. Don't never test whether God is going to care for you. Because if he did it yesterday, surely he'll do it today. And if he do it today, all you got to do is stick with him all the way through to tomorrow. Don't never question God's love. Because now Satan moves him. Satan moves him to the temple in Jerusalem. Walk with me if you will. And he puts him on the highest point of the temple and he tells him, jump off. No worries. No worry about it. Because if, if you are the son of God, the angels will come and see about you. God will deliver you. God will keep you. God will come. God will not let you hurt or harm yourself. Walk with me if you will. You ever seen people get shout in church? I mean really just shout. And then they get slain in the spirit and they just fall out. Now you understand what's under this carpet is no more than cement. It's no more than blocks and what all that good stuff. But you know what the saints will tell you? Don't try to hold a person. Don't try to stop a person when they're slain in the spirit. Let them hit the floor because you know what? God ain't going to let you hurt yourself. God would not let you hurt yourself. Now, I've seen a lot of people shout. I've seen a lot of people slain in the spirit. And not one has had to go to the hospital. Not one has had to be connected to. Not one has needed bandages. Not one has needed a crutch. You know why? Because God was right there. But the thing about it is they had enough faith to know. They had enough faith to know that God would not allow them to hurt themselves. <laughs> he says, if. You are the son of God. Jump off this temple. Jesus could have done it. And a legion of angels would have been at his side. He could have done it. And God would have delivered him right then and there. But what good would that have been for the scripture? He says, it's written. It's written in Deuteronomy 6 and 16. Notice what he tells Satan. 
get behind me. You ain't in charge of nothing. My God is over me. My God will provide. This is the problem when it comes to this, 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 this emotional temptation. We let people get in our ear and then we just go with whatever they tell us. Stop letting people get up on you. Stop letting people dictate to you what you should do. Nobody should be ahead of God. Whatever lie they come and tell you, give it to God. Because if it's the truth, God going to confirm it. He tells him, get behind me, Satan. You ain't running nothing. You done jumped on the wrong person today. I got 66 books backing me up. God Almighty. What you got to understand is just saying, don't ever test God's love. Because God loved you before, even before he created you. God loved you enough to create you. God loved you enough to bring you into the house of God. God loved you enough to elevate you. God loved you enough to give you all that you asked for. God loved you enough to meet every one of your needs. God loved you enough even when you didn't love him. God loved you. This is the problem. The third temptation that comes before us is the control temptation. This is the lust of the eyes. This is the lust of the eyes. You have to understand something about the lust of the eyes. Everything I see is everything I want. Everything I see is everything I deserve. Everything I see is everything I should have. I know you want it, but I deserve it. I know you need it, but I should have it. We have elevated ourselves over other people just to believe that we are so much better than they are. That we deserve better than what they've got. But the truth is, he loves us all unconditionally. He loves us all unconditionally. It doesn't bother about my race. It doesn't bother about my education. It doesn't bother about the clothes I wear. It doesn't bother about the, tips, the color of my skin. It does not bother. He loves me unconditionally. He said, look, whatever I see, I deserve it. He says, if you are the son of God, just look around and I will give you all the kingdoms that you see. That's the shortcut to the throne if you don't understand it. That's the shortcut to the glory if you don't understand that. But for, but for the flesh, it's the shortcut to having everything that we want. Yeah. But the truth is, I'm going to be honest with you. The truth is, some of the things that I pray for, some of the things that I ask for, I'm so glad that God didn't deliver it to me. Don't sell your soul just for anything. Don't walk away from God. Don't get disconnected from God just for anything. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. It ain't nothing you got on. It ain't nothing that you own yes, going in that casket with you. Yes. They're going to roll you down here. They're going to roll you down here. And the only thing going to be in it is the shell of your body. Yes. Your soul is already gone. So you ain't taking nothing with you. So don't be, don't be, don't be money hungry. Good God. It's already written. Jesus said it's already written. That look, whatever I need, I know my God will provide. And he will provide it his way. I know my God will provide, and he will provide it his way. Yes. If you ever, if you ever want to see some, if you ever want to see what the cost of temptation does to people, this going to sound cruel, but go to a mental institution sometime. Amen. If you ever want to see what it costs people, go to the graveyard sometime. There's a lot of people in prison right now 
are saying if. If I had just left her alone. If I had just been content with all. Temptation will take you out. It will destroy you. It is important that we study these things. Because I got to ask you a question now. Is there anyone sitting in here right now that God has not met their most basic need? The reason I can ask you that question is about what you don't know. Pastor sees everything. I can tell when you got on new clothes. Amen, amen. I can see the new cars in the parking lot. I can even see the new dinner work. Amen. Is there anyone that God is not caring for, not covering, not keeping right now? Yeah. Sister Green. I heard a testimony last Sunday. <laughs> that was an individual in here that was in need financially. Called and got some help. But before the help could get there, God had already made a way. Yeah. Now, this, this ain't the shouting part. The shouting part is, is that even though this individual received double. You know what she did? The physical help that she got, she sent it back. She sent it back. <laughs> now I know what you're saying with your saved and sanctified self. Well, I should have waited on God. But the truth is, there was a need. The people had a desire to meet the need. But when God showed up, yes, sir. I'm talking about right on time. Yes, not a minute too late, not a minute early. Yes. Just to show his power and authority. That individual could have been greedy and say, well, now, that's all right. I got double for my trouble. But I want you to think about something. You take advantage of somebody. Yes. I promise you. It's going to come back on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The individual sent it back and said, thank you. They said, well, I thought you needed it. God showed up. God showed up. Well, you can keep, no. God showed up. It ain't no telling when I might need you the next time. Amen. But this time, God showed up. Yes. God showed up. I love that. I love that. Because that, that, that was a need. That was a need, but the individual was not greedy. He did more than enough. You know how I know? Because he showed up. Yes, yes. He didn't have to. Because we ain't been all that. Amen. All right. All right. But in our time of need, he showed up. He showed up. There are some things that I didn't need. They call them wants. Amen. God gave them to me. But it was measured. Do you understand what it means when it's measured? It means, walk with me if you will, it means that when it's measured, that I know you've been praying for it. I know you've been obedient and faithful for it. But you never put it over me. It never became a God to you. It never became a God to you. I'm getting ready to close because I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta read what, sister, what, what Deacon Hurst said. Temptation 
To act on the temptation will cause you to become your own God. But the word will keep you focused on the real God. Stand on your feet. Look, we are going into revival season. We are going into revival season. And I know, I know I hear some people say, why we need a revival? God will get everything we ask for. It for. He, is, he is blessing us. He is, he is doing abundantly more than what we, everything that we have prayed for, he has delivered. We're in revival season. We're in revival season. And the reason that we need revival reason we not read the Bible, you have to understand the Beatitudes. It's not that we're not blessed physically. But we got to be blessed spiritually. We are poor in spirit. We are poor in spirit. I might as well just finish this. That's the reason I don't have pastor's anniversary until we all come together and want to celebrate God as one we're poor in spirit if we see another person elevated and we can't clap for them we can't get excited for them we're poor in spirit Amen. we need a revival and I pray you start praying now for a revival that we come together now, I ain't tied up in all this thing where all of us got to agree on the same thing. That, that's mythical. We don't have to agree on the same thing. But we got to walk together with God on the same thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. If we run in and looking for shortcuts, we're never going to get to where God wants us to be. Amen? Amen? I'm not counting numbers of the growth of the church because that was a sin because it shows it in David in 2 Chronicles. I'm not counting that. I'm not worried about the number. I'm not concerned about that. You can have a thousand souls in the house but only one saved person. What I'm focused on is is our souls. Our souls. And my main focus is is that we won't sell them out for money. We won't sell them out for another individual's blessing. Our souls. That we stand for God or nothing else. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. The doors of the church are open now. They've been open for 2,000 years. I pray they never close. I pray we continue to walk for God. I pray we continue to work for God. Be obedient to God. Worship God. Will there be one? Will there be one to have a desire to come into the kingdom of God right now? Will there be one to extend the hand of kindness? That they want to know their, know their Savior. That they want to walk faithfully. The other invitation is, is that you come into the house of God. Be joined together with his bodies, with his people. Form a body of Christ that walks faithfully, lives faithfully, where there be one. The final invitation is for those that are falling away, that are backslidden, that can't seem to find their way, that have been lost, that have fallen by the wayside, it is your time now to recommit to God. Amen. Amen. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in this day and forevermore. Let the church say amen. 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 The church say amen. Yes, Lord. Let the church say amen. 
God has spoken. Let the church say. Let the church say. Yes, Lord. Let the church say. God has spoken. Let the church say. Go in peace.